The device is surely something you won't forget about the first time you see its display, when this impressive notch pops out from the top of the panel. It's the first of its kind in the U series and quite possibly one of the most interesting iPhone X clones out there. Let's have a closer look on what this affordable device can do, okay? The Ucatel U18 packs a 5,85-inch 720p display which is extremely tough, up to 9H hardness, being able to withstand more than 800 megapascals of stress value. It's equipped with MediaTek MT 6750T SOC, paired with a Mali T860 MP2 GPU, 4GB of RAM as well as 64GB of internal storage. It's not expandable unfortunately, for apps, games, and media. On its back we can find a dual camera setup with a 13 megapixel snapper plus 5 MP secondary lens, along with a LED flash next to it. There's also an 8 megapixel shooter available up front. This is one of the first iPhone X clones as we foretold you and it runs on Android 7.0 Nougat, with no way of knowing yet if it will get some Oreo upgrades. It's not stock Android, no, but it's really close to pure Android, as Ucatel has managed to add just some of their very own features, a typical, light away to launcher and a icon theme. I have to admit that when you look this U18 model from up front you get the feeling that it is indeed a decent iPhone X clone. The display however is not as impressive as the OLED panel that the iPhone has, but it still does the job I guess. It has a resolution of just 1512 by 720 pixels, HD+. A size of 5,85 inches with 21 to 9 ratio and a really impressive brightness even in broad daylight. If you've had a Nucatel smartphone in the past, then you'd probably know that they're almost all bulky devices. The same thing applies to the Ucatel U18 model I'm afraid, as it weighs 213 grams and it's approximately 10 millimeters thick. However these numbers feel normal on this type of phones, specifically the ones with large batteries like most Ucatel smartphones. This one packs a 4000 mAh battery so it's more or less expected to be this heavy, but it's also really durable with an extremely solid build. It's made out of metal and some parts plastic, in case you were wondering. In everyday use, the Ucatel U18 may be heavy but still, there's a reason one will choose this phone isn't there? It has a small footprint thanks to its 21 to 9 aspect ratio display, so it can easily fit into most pockets, or allow for one-handed use with impressive performance. Oh, let's not forget that there's a fingerprint scanner placed at the back of the device providing quite fast fingerprint recognition with almost 90% success rate. You can use it to lock applications, unlock the phone and it can read fingerprints in 360 degrees. Call performance is one of the most important factors for me, when I test a phone. How good it sounds, what type of signal reception it has and how well its speaker works. The Ucatel U18 did quite well in this test by my standards. The phone call quality was satisfactory, but nothing that is worth bragging about. I was able to call others and receive calls on this device without any issues, with quite good sound quality and volume. I found its speaker to be rough I guess, with loud noise when ringtones were played back, but nothing that could disappoint me I guess. I have to say that the microphone was quite solid and the overall connectivity via both data and Wi-Fi networks was consistent. I didn't experience any problems with 3G slash 4G or Wi-Fi during my tests, 
All web pages were easily accessible via Wi-Fi but the signal strength when I was a bit far from my router dropped quite easily. I didn't face any disconnections thankfully but the Wi-Fi range drops rapidly after 10 to 12 meters walk from the Wi-Fi router. The 4G speeds were average, with good reception wherever I went, zero dropped connections and a decent all-in-all -all performance. Well here's where this phone does a decent job. One of the main selling points of the Ucatel U18 is its battery life, and for a good reason. It comes with 4000 mA capacity, but the Android 7.0 operating system is beautifully optimized to offer great standby and talk times. The Ucatel U18 can stay away from its charger for almost two days if you use it wisely, and offers good standby times when you put it to rest. I pushed the device as much as I could, I played some games, browsed the internet, did tons of messaging and YouTube, phone calls as well but it just went from 74% to 49% by the end of the first day, confirming that it's a decent energy phone. First of all, don't choose the phones of this category purely for their imaging features. It's not where they're good at, and they know it. You should know it too. So the Ucatel U18 confirms all of the above and proves to be an average camera phone equipped with a dual camera setup on its back, equipped with a 13 megapixel snapper plus a 5MP secondary lens, along with a LED flash next to it. Its main camera can shoot decent photos in good lighting conditions but it tends to provide somewhat colder images than it should. When the light isn't that good, however, it doesn't perform that well, as expected with most Chinese smartphones in this category and price range. It can also shoot FHD 1080p videos at 25fps, with average quality and some high contrast issues. There are also several other settings and modes such as Face Beauty Shot, HDR, Blur, Mono, Panorama, Pro etc. There's also a LED flash placed next to the main camera. It manages to light up the images, but it doesn't do what it should, it basically ruins selfies, letting them turn out unnatural and you'll probably opt not to use flash, at least in most situations. The same goes for the 8MP selfie camera that's placed in front, inside the notch obviously. The images lack details and are nothing to brag about, that's for sure, but it will do more than a good job if you shoot selfies from time to time, and the same goes for video calls via Skype etc. The Ucatel U18 runs on Android 7.0.1 Nougat with a simple icon theme and a typical lock screen made by the Chinese company, so it's not pure Android, but it's really lightweight and easy to move around in the menus. Ucatel uses their own launcher with some special effects, desktop settings for those of you who love to tweak a bit their phones and includes a set of gesture options. You can, for example, double tap the capacitive home button in order to wake up the device, and you can do the same in order to lock it. All of these gestures can be disabled in settings by the way. As far as the notification shade, settings and a number of other parts of the software are concerned, this is stock Android 7.0 Nougat. It's one of the reasons Ucatel U18 manages to perform as it should, and it's definitely a huge plus for this smartphone. Ucatel is surely one of the decent manufacturers if you're in the market for an affordable device with solid battery life. This one goes a step further and tries to take advantage of this whole notch frenzy, providing a smartphone that when you look its front side is very similar to the iPhone X, with a semi-bezel-less display, a notch and a decent price.
I must say that this model from Mugetel was quite decent in its battery performance even though its 4000 mAh capacity is not the largest in the market today. However, it performs well in average, everyday use, and most novice or semi-experienced Android users will enjoy it, no doubt about it. After all its price nowadays, approximately $159 is great for those who have limited budget to spend on a phone. Keep in mind that it's a bit heavy, but on the other hand it's durable, it has a notch display with awesome brightness and offers great build quality. If you're into this whole iPhone X design but you prefer Android OS and have a tight budget, then this is one phone you should see for yourselves.